Well, well, well. Well, well, well. Well, 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 well. Well, well, well. I say the same thing myself every day. Same thing myself. I say, what's going on with this shit? Say the same thing myself every day. Same thing myself. I say, what's going on with this shit? That bank is a serial killer. Trying to build more prisons for your children. That doctor's a drug dealer. Make a profit, gotta make a killing. Mm. Everything go to the highest bidder. Everything go to the highest bidder. Everything go to the highest bidder. Everything go to the highest bidder now. Mm. I figured the same way the truth do every day, the same way the truth do I say, what's going on with this suit? I figured the same way the truth do every day, the same way the truth do I say, what's going on with this suit? Technology feeds the spirit you're dead. Then it sees they live inside your head. Come on, see. Wait, now you can't. Wait now you can't go Wait now you can't go home no more Everything go to the highest bidder 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 now Bitter. Everything go to the highest bidder. Everything go to the highest bidder. Everything go to the highest bidder now. Doctor, drug dealer, faith healer. Everything go to the highest bidder. Everything go to the highest bidder. Everything go to the highest bidder. Everything go to the highest bidder now. This is uh, 88.5 Fantastic Negrito. Check out Oh Betty. It's a song I wrote about. Uh, my seventh generation interracial grandparents forbidden illegal union in the mid 1700s. They made it happen in Virginia. Grandpa, where are you going? Nah. Sweet songs 
you singing? I can hear them song. Oh, Betty, it's late in the evening. Staring through your window pane, it ain't believing, but it's the only thing I do. Well, my sweet, sweet Betty, I can hear you laugh and cry. Your tears they clean me. You're the only thing that feeds me. Ooh, my Betty. You'll be free in seven years while well, I'm still bleeding. I wonder if you'll ever do me. He that sweet song just singing. I can hear them sweet songs just singing. Fantastic Negrito, and um, I'm on 88.5 here. We're about to do a song called They Go Low. Somebody save us. Somebody save us. Somebody save us. I seen a dead man walking. It was something that I seen before. There's a song he was singing About a life that he wanted to live But I was never superstitious Walk on the ladders, leaning on the wall But I could see He would crash, burn and fall They go low Tattoos all over his face A gangbanger's dream mascot I'm too old so I couldn't relate There's a song he was singing About his mama she was digging his grave With crack dry hands Screaming Jesus' name They go low They go low, low, low They go low Thank you. 
break you down Somebody save us Somebody save us Somebody save us now The Elvis Plessy of the ghetto Big chicken and a side of greens He sat staring out the window Pointing fingers at the devil's a scene But someone just his own reflection He knew the storm was coming soon That evening he was found dead in his room They go low, 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 low Low, low, low They go low, low, low Till they break You're watching another 88.5 Live here at South by Southwest. My name is Byron Gonzalez. I am your correspondent during the festival. And today I am joined by multi-Grammy award winning musician, singer-songwriter, just an overall person of the world. We got fantastic Negrito right here right beside me. Sí. How are you? I'm doing great. How about you? Super bien. Muchas gracias por hacer esto. Uh, muchas uh, gracias de nada, mi amigo. Um, um, poquito hablo español. Vivo <laughs> en Oakland, California. Muchos años. Uh, ¿Qué pasó, amigo? There we go. I, hey, that's Come really good. Now. That's really good. Come we on. were talking about it earlier. I know some other stuff, but we can't say that here. <laughs> <laughs> we'll unrated. hang out later and say it. Yeah, we'll do the unrated <laughs> version of 88.5 Live at right. night. <laughs> well, thank you again for performing these awesome songs. You performed your, your singles. It was Oh Betty. And Highest Bitter. Highest Bitter. And you oh, did an exclusive for us. I did an exclusive. Um, you know, you guys have always shown me a lot of love and support, so I wanted to give you the exclusive to They Go Low. Never they heard go. before by a soul. Not a soul. It's about to re be released soon in May. So I'm really excited to hear the full production. We heard the stripped down version. Appreciate that, man. Thank it you. it really like means a lot. Down. Well, thanks. I like the strip stuff down. Thank you. you know, yeah. Hang around me long enough, you see that I strip a lot of things down. <laughs> <laughs> strip them down. I love it. I love yeah. it. Uh, this, ne this next one is not really so much a question, but you can also comment on it. Uh, I love your lyrics. They're always thought provoking. And, and I appreciate that a lot in an artist because. I think, as we were saying before, you got to wake some people up sometimes. Yeah, I mean, the first person I want to wake up is myself, you know, because that's the person I have the most control out of. So if I can get myself on a, um, you know, a super conscious level when I'm recording, I mean, when you're in the studio, that's your probably your most honest moment is you in that studio, you know, facing the uh, machines. And I think... Everything else is a little bit of posturing and, oh, you know, <laughs> rehearsal. And, but I, I love really getting honest in the studio because it's, it's the best place. And if you, can, if you can make it happen there, then people may feel what you're talking about. But I feel like that's the only honest moment. The rest is all performance. Really? And bravado and, yeah. Okay. Look at me. You know, <laughs> my solo. <laughs> but I, I think there's also some honesty in, in naming the songs as well. And I, I, naming the album... Uh, your new album is going to be called White Jesus, Black Problems. That already, yes. you know, so many things go in my head. Where Tell me a few of them. <laughs> it's a where do I start, you know, yeah. as someone, a, a, a person of color. Like, yeah. where do we start with that? You know, what Because I, mean? I think for us, it means a lot. Of, first of all, it has, it has nothing to do with Jesus. It's, but it has something to do with like this construct. This exactly. false construct, yeah. you know, that we see it. I see it in South America. I see it in Africa. I see it in the United States. And it um, destroys people, literally. And it's not a coincidence that, um, especially for African Americans, we're being 13.5% of the population, but some, most of us incarcerated on the, when we get down to percentage and statistics. Yeah. So 
that has a lot to do with it. You know, yeah. this um, the album is basically about how my seventh generation grandparents challenged the edifice of uh, white supremacy, and That's they amazing. did it basically by falling in love with each other. My grandmother <laughs> was a white Scottish um, indentured servant. Wow. And my grandfather was an enslaved African. So this was in the 1700s. I actually found this story. How, so how did you find it? That I seems in, like very, very deep, 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 deep digging. Well, it all started with E40. E40? All the, good things the start with artists? E40. All good things What? start with E40. Yeah. <laughs> Come on now. So me, me and E40, we um, did a song together. And the song got licensed in a show called Black Lightning which is oh, a yeah, popular show, real popular with the kids. <laughs> um, and and uh, so I was there in Atlanta, no vaccine, unvaccinated, traveling with triple masks on, but it was a gig. I was broke. I need to feed my family. It was like, oh, so I needed a gig. Yeah. And um, he's like, I'm not going to do that shit, you know? So I went. I performed a song, but I was in the hotel. I had all this time on my hands. They were like, do not leave the hotel. Oh. They come and they test you every day. During the pandemic, so I started deep diving on the internet and I went through my family tree on my mother's side and I saw these African Americans dressed very, you know, so wow. well, dignity and dignified. I'm, I looked at the year and it was the time of slavery. So I'm like, where'd y'all get them clothes from? How is this that during the time of slavery, you're my ancestors, you're black. Right. And you're dressed in some of the finest clothing and you have your photograph. So as I dug deeper, found the census papers that said free Negroes. And I was like, a little bit shocked. I mean, when so, you look back that back in the history, your shock is... Well, I, I, you know, we're taught a narrative. There's yes. a narrative in this country. It's like, you're the victim. You pick the fruit. I'm going to be the perpetrator. You go to the universities. You know what I mean? It is, and we fall victim to this narrative. So yeah. I'm digging deep and I find census and I'm documents. I didn't going through all these documents. Then I go to the fourth generation, which is rare for black folks. We don't usually go that far. Not documenting-wise? Well, just that, you know, we got here under some precarious oh, circumstances. I gotcha. So, Because on my, mother, my, my mother's paternal side, I can only go back to my great-great-great-grandfather. So anyway, fourth generation free, fifth generation free, sixth generation free. So I, I start feeling... Wow. I'm starting to feel weird now. I'm like walking around, I'm pacing. I'm like, damn, man, I talked a lot of shit to these white people. And now I have some free, free blood. I, I mean, I honestly thought that. I just, I felt a little like almost guilty. Like, damn, I, I kind of had some privilege there. You know, my, oh, I get they that. They had free black people. And I looked, I Googled in Virginia, there was 50,000 free black people in Virginia during that time. Who gets taught that in school? No. And I think there's a problem there because if you keep telling somebody you're down here, you're a victim, sorry, buddy, you know, you need some extra help getting on the bus. Mm -hmm. I think that people start to carry that in their head. And our kids carry it, and then you, we're just playing, and we're in this play that somebody wrote. Somebody's repressed fantasy of the world and of race and of culture. So I think it's important to get it out there. Yeah. So I get to this sixth generation. Seventh generation. And I was like, yes. There's only one woman there, so now I got, I'm back, white people. You probably raped my grandmother. She had these kids. You set them free, right? Roll the dice. Uh, wrong. She's white. So then I'm like, oh. Uh, so it's like, like how could that be? I kept reading it over and over again. I'm like, wait, 1700s, white woman, black man. Black man, they say unnamed Negro slave. The document said, 1759, Elizabeth Gallimore, my seventh generation grandmother, is presented in Amelia County Court for unlawfully cohabitating with a Negro slave belonging to Henry Jones. I must have read it over 60 times. I, kept, wow. I got up in the middle of the night and looked at it. Again, it was just, I never expected to find something like that. So, But then I understood myself a lot reading that. I was like, wow, that really... Now I know why I'm wearing these pants. Oh. I'm like, I came from people who were irreverent. They were not going to be... Um, how would we say it? Like, just boxed into this world that people created for them. They were like, well, I fell in love with somebody. That's how I challenge your white supremacy. I'm 
I fall in love with a human being. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, that kicked off six generations of free black people in yeah, our family. As, as cliche as it sounds, right? Love kind of conquers all sometimes. Or it's a, it's a big sign of protest at most times, too. Well, that's some punk rock shit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's people talk about being progressive. That is progressive. I mean, that yeah. choice could have got you yeah. killed. And that's where Highest Bitter came from. Because I, I started off with that song. Because I'm like, wow. Everything really goes to the highest bidder. You're, okay, you made kids with this enslaved person. Um, we're going to get something out of this. So the kids couldn't be enslaved because of the status of the woman. Oh, yeah. because She's an yeah. indentured servant. So they got seven years out of the kids. But then we were free after that. Wow. So I was like, wow, is it really money? Like we're, we're, we're looking at, you know, the construct of race again. We're like, we're, we just... We bang our heads up against, okay, race, race. Okay, I'm black over here. You're white over there. You're Latino in here. We got, I got my signs over here. They got your yeah. slogans. You ready? One, two, three. Go. And it's like we go in this circle. But I don't know if we're res resolving anything. And I, and I think, like, if my grandparents, an interracial couple, an illegal union yeah. in the mid-1700s could make it, why can't we make it? Yeah, that's I kind think of, their that's challenges. Very inspiring. I think their very challenges inspiring. were much more severe than the challenges that we. <laughs> yeah, faced. like thinking back. Like, thinking back. I mean, uh, we're we're like babies compared to that. Yeah. yeah. So it really, I felt them tapping me like, okay, go, grandson, go. So so after finding that out, I'm, sh I mean, listening to your lyrics right now, was it like, just flowing out of you? Or was oh, it was flowing. Flowing. It was just like I I did I just I was a conduit for them they're like please tell our story people need to hear it yeah i mean it's we get silenced a lot and you're just creating with this album it seems like you're just creating another history history book to be told and taught and, and you know it's like lessons outside of the classroom type of thing yeah absolutely and i i don't want to give myself that much credit i don't think i'm even creating it what i'm doing is i'm reading the document that's right there I made this album based on a document I found. That's, that's, that's it. crazy. So the history's there. It's just that yeah. we're not taught the history. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I think in society, we're all, everyone is taught like this narrative. And we just go along, we play along. And so we get so bogged down in our own ideology and our own dogma. And we're just kind of screaming at each other. And we don't, we don't get anywhere. Wow. Well, you definitely are trying to say a lot with this album, not only the title. And I also read that you're making a film to just add on to what yeah. you're creating. That, well, that, to me, is mind-blowing, too. You're making an album that's a big feat in itself. It's a big feat. And then feat. <laughs> partnering it up with a film. Well, you know what? I was... Um, what was your team saying? Like, stop giving us so much work. <laughs> I don't know what they're saying. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. They're getting a lot of content. Um, I think everybody's happy with the content. You know, it was a pandemic. We had time. I kept looking at it. I thought, man, I need to make a movie, but I'd never made a movie. I didn't know any actors. Oh, so I asked okay. my drummer, James Small. Well, he's a drummer. I don't want to say he's my drummer. <laughs> he is the drummer. No. The drummer. Yeah, James Small. Uh, I was he's like, hey. There. I was like, you, may, you look tall and big and strong and handsome. <laughs> I didn't know he was that handsome, actually. I just said big and, big and tall. And strong. So you could play my grandfather. And he's like, I've done some theater. So I think I asked him at rehearsal like about five times. But he's, James is soft-spoken. So he's oh, okay. like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so you don't know. Like, I'm like, does he really want to do it? Yeah, okay, cool. Just <laughs> let me know. So um, he happened to be, have a very pretty Scottish-looking girlfriend. I'm like, hey, she ever done a movie? And she's like, no. You want to play my grandmother? You got the whole she's, family in there, huh? She's like, I guess, you know. And, James, is this okay? And so, so I started, I started like enlisting my neighbors and so my, my accountant. Wow. My accountant. I was okay. like, hey, you could be in my movie. So it was weird for a while. People were like, see me coming. They were walking okay. the other way. I got my, my neighbor had to play Henry Jones, like the overseer. He's like such a teddy bear, a nice guy. And I'm like, you got to be mean. And <laughs> oh, she, no, no. Put the chains on James. He's like, no, please. Damn. But I think everybody in the end, they thought I, it, they wanted to be part of it because... It feels like a time where we can maybe take a step, a baby step, and tell a story that's powerful and positive, and yeah. we're, nobody's getting blamed <laughs> for a change. Yeah, and, like and, we're not blaming anybody, and I think that that's powerful. Yes. When you can stop blaming people, you can start moving forward in everything. 
Yeah. In everything. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Um, yeah, because you're just adding on to this like amazing like movement to tell black stories lately and just helping people realize that yeah a lot of stories do get silenced along the way and with all the climate going on right now where people are still trying to push back on telling people of color stories from people of color which is still insane to me you know what i mean well yeah i feel like people can only do what you let them do yeah i'm a strong believer in that man my dad was born in 1905 and he my grandmothers they were strong people they're like hey you know you can do anything we want to do. That's amazing. It's up to us. And so, you know, we got the microphone. We got the platform. It's up to us. Yeah. Don't ever let anybody tell your story. I don't care who they are. That's your story. It's my story. It's his story. Her story. We're all unique. Yeah. And we have a story. And it's, it's important because there are lessons in stories. You go back in history. All we're doing is reading stories. This happened. Yeah. And this. And Genghis Khan did what? Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, that's terrible. You know, well, it's history. You know, stories. I mean, that's... Before entertainment, before even writing books, it was all oral stories, oral right? Oral stories, totally. Which is like what we're doing now. Yeah. Telling a story, whether it's even talking about your album or talking about your grandparents, everything's a story. Well, and all, you know, folklore, folk art, every culture, yeah. it's just stories. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. Uh, so just to be a little bit more clear maybe for the audience, so you're telling me there's actors in this, so it's a, a full film, like a feature film, well, no documentary, or is it like half a documentary, half a feature film? I don't really know what it is. It's like letting me cook, <laughs> which can be beautiful or it could be a disaster. It's a concoction. So that's it. That's the spectrum, y'all. <laughs> Nothing in between. But it's, um, I call it, what I've learned from people is that it's a visual album. I didn't know that term. It's a huh. visual album, um, and there are interstitials after the songs that are telling the story. I'm kind of narrating it. Oh, interesting. I'm kind of the, I'm the narrator. I'm telling the story of Elizabeth Betty Gallimore. And grandfather, I gave him a name. I call him Grandfather Courage because the document says, man, you know, unnamed slave. And I'm like, that ain't cool. So let's give him a name. Courage. Grand, grandfather Courage. So um, it's, a, it's 40 minutes. So I don't know what that qualifies as. I think it feels yeah. like a movie to me. Yeah, that's amazing. So, but visual album is technically the term. Yeah. Spe- visual album movie. <laughs> black, uh, white, Jesus, white Jesus Black Problems, the visual album movie. That's the title. There you go. <laughs> An American story. Because in the story. end, that's what it is. Yeah. I mean, I got my DNA results back and I'm like, okay. 70% African. Yeah, yeah. Then I was like, 27% European. Like, there you how? Go. It's your great, 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 seventh I'm like, great that's grandma. A, well, it's not even her. It's a lot of, oh, even a lot of messing now. around. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, that's, it may, I look at things, looking at the world differently. Like, man, really? Never wow. saw that one coming. So it's interesting and it's something powerful and constructive that, you know, I feel like you can walk out of the room with in your hand. It's a tool. We can go out there and face the world, look yeah. at the world differently. Well, not even walk out of the room, kind of carry it with your whole life. Yeah. You totally. know what I mean? It changed the way that I view things. And I'm sure people of color are going to see it th- that way, too, because, you know, there's still things in, that I'm learning now. I'm 30. Yeah, in yeah my of 30s, course. And then I'm Have still... you done your DNA? Re- no. You need to do it. It's going to be gonna... weird. You should do I it. I hope I'm 100% Guatemalan, you know? <laughs> but who knows? Well, Guatemalan, you know? I mean, that's a... Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of Chinese people yeah. in Guatemala, Chinese, too. Chinese, native, yeah. Spanish, there's a lot of... Yeah. Everywhere. I mean, even just Mexican, Guatemala, all these things are they're made up, yeah. and they're just people that all mix. Yeah, yeah, it's true, it's like true. Like African-Americans, we are people that just mix. Find, find one African-American that's yeah. 100% pure. And we were different distance from the sun, so we got different colors and stuff. Absolutely, yeah. different climates. Yeah. Evolution, man. <laughs> One Crazy, thing that yeah. human beings, you know, we're these organisms, we like to rub up against each other. And I think <laughs> when you tell us not to, like my grandmother, she's, you know, I think she's like working inside, you know, the indentured servant. She looked out the field and, <laughs> and grandpa was in shape or something. I don't know. <laughs> looking like a melting chocolate bar in the sun. <laughs> she great. was like, yummy. That's great. And, and here I am, a result of these amazing people. There you go. Just looking just as fine, man. Just looking, yeah, feel, fine. looking fine, feeling fine. <laughs> uh, a little bit more about the album, and, and uh, I'm sure it's complete by now. Are, is there a song you're most excited, maybe most excited to play live? 
It's not fair. It's like these songs are like my kids. Yeah. It's not really... Um, or, or, or maybe... I don't know. What do I love playing live? I mean, I kind of love playing Virginia Soil live because it feels so uplifting and so optimistic. And it's the exact story of my grandparents meeting and... Um, Making it through it. Okay, so that's like the pinnacle of this timeline. That's the last song on the album, Virginia Soil. And, it's, and I'm a Virginian, man. I mean, I'm from California, but my, I go back to the Revolutionary War. I saw, you know, the pensions and all that. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm from Virginia. Oh, wow. So I like playing Virginia Soil live. It's just very light. Feels fun and optimistic. I, like, I love optimism. That's beautiful. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, we, yeah, that's I, all we got to look for sometimes. Yeah. I'm very optimistic, despite what people say. <laughs> that's great. Like, and White that's Jesus, a, black problems. I was that optimistic. Very, it's a love story. Listen to the song. It's to a the love songs. story, yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, and it's the truth. It's the truth. That's amazing. Well, fantastic, Negrito. I feel like we can talk for on hours, but, you know. Hours. Hours. Yes. But thank you so much again for talking with 88.5 today. You know, we're big supporters of you. Absolutely. And I thank you very much. And all the listeners out there, um, hope to see you soon, somewhere live. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. FM, KCSN, and KCSN HD1, Northridge, Los Angeles. KSBR and KSBR HD1, Mission Viejo. A service of California State University, Northridge, and Saddleback College. Member-supported public radio. Streaming on the web at 885FM.org.